Hi, welcome to the 10 minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on the 31st of January, 2021. My name is Don Bold, I'm the pastor at the church. I'd like to share with you for about 10 minutes just the highlights from Sunday's message. Uh, we're looking at being sincere and blameless. And in this time of, of challenge, uh, you know, in our country and in our lives, you know, I think this is a, a good challenge for us. All right, and it's Philippians 1 9 through 11. And this I pray, Apostle Paul speaking to the church, okay, that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge. Again, just in all discernment so that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ. So the, the goal here is to be sincere and blameless. All the stuff fed into it, that's how we're going to accomplish it. Having been filled uh, with the fruit of righteousness which comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So the prize is to be sincere and blameless. All right, and we're going to listen. So what does it mean to be sincere? Sincere is what you are, okay? You are pure and genuine. All right, that you know you're not a phony. You know you don't put on false fronts. You don't pretend too much. You know it's you're genuine. You know people you know find that you're the same pretty much whenever they come to you. All right, and uh, I remember there was something I really admired as a person who's the same person at lunch as they were in the pulpit. You know, and uh, you know I used to be responsible for uh, hospitality for a lot of guest speakers. Uh, you know, but uh, the, you know it's it goes on to say that uh, you're pure and genuine even when exposed to the light of the sun. In other words, uh, you ever buy something in a store and it looked pretty good, you got it outside, and once you got it in the sunlight, it looked a whole lot different, and maybe you started to see things that you hadn't seen before? Well, it's saying even exposed to the brightest and purest of light, you know, we still come out looking pretty genuine, okay? So, anyways, blameless. Oh, my. That's, I mean, that's a very challenging one, isn't it? And blameless, that's who you are and what you do, all right? And so... It, there's two parts of this. The passive side of it, you're just sitting there as a lump. What are you? All right. But then there's this, but then as that, what do you do? All right. So uh, passively, it just means you're, you're faultless. Oh my, <laughs> like that's easy, right? But no, you have to understand that a person who's faultless in this respect is a person, first of all, uh, that has dealt with their faults, okay? It doesn't mean that they never slip and fall and need to ask to be forgiven. It just means that they've dealt with those faults. And if they haven't dealt with those faults, somebody has taken the time and restored them and they're, they're restored in those things. And so they're, they're, they're a person just, you know, for all your examination of them, when somebody says, you know, tell me what their faults are, it's a hard project to figure out what they are because, you know, they, they live a life that, that, that exemplifies other things rather than those faults. All right. And then actively, it means that you don't lead nor are you led towards sin. All right. That in other words, if somebody's hanging out with you, are they more likely or less likely to fall into something they shouldn't be doing that would be displeasing to God? And so it's this, you know, so there's being blameless, being sincere and blameless. And then it's until the day of Christ, which means throughout the course of your life. Now, I want to encourage you. And so well, first of all, let's, let me just read the scripture. It's over in Matthew uh, 24, 13. It says the, the one who endures to the end will be saved. Okay. This idea of patient endurance. All right. And just I want to introduce you to this idea about the 30-year Christian. And here's what it is. Um, when I got saved at 19 years old, I could not imagine being 50. All right. And so uh, so as I looked out and said, I'm going to be faithful, uh, and maybe I was looking at 10 years. Maybe my horizon was 15 years. But I was aiming for that horizon, whatever it would be. And, and probably about the longest horizon that a person typically gets in a, in a year that they, in a life that they live to be 90 would be about a 30-year horizon. So I talk about the 30-year Christian, you know, and, and about how... You know, in a lot of cases, you know, we have a hard time finding people who have re remained faithful over a period of 30 years. But if you don't aim for it, you won't hit it. So I, I just encourage people, you know, to have that horizon that you're constantly aiming for. You know there's more beyond it, or at least you hope there is. You know eternity's beyond it, but you, but you have something to aim at, that horizon to, to, to be faithful. You know, sometimes you're just trying to be faithful to the next day uh, until you can see more of the horizon, okay? Sometimes things kind of obscure it. All right, so uh, I press on toward the goal uh, for the prize the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, Philippians 3, 14, all right, this idea that I am, I am reaching forward for that, which, you know, is, is perhaps beyond my grasp at this moment, but I know what direction is, so I'm, I'm going that way, and Jesus said this, I'll, I will be with you always, even to the end, that's over Matthew 28, 20, you know, so we're not doing this alone, this is not something that you could do alone, all right, it's something that requires uh, God to be present in your life, for Jesus Christ to be active in you, all right, so, uh, so he said, I pray that your love would abound still more and more in real knowledge knowledge and discernment. So there's this ever-increasing, super abundant love that's growing in us and being expressed through us. But I want to just, you know, make sure that we understand this, all right? It's neither ignorant, all right, nor is it gullible. All right. It is discerning. It is knowing. It knows the difference between good and bad. Uh, you know, it says love, of, you know, basically uh, covers a multitude of sins. It doesn't say it, it pretends they're not there. You see them 
and you decide to cover them rather than embarrass the person. Uh, you know, maybe speak to them privately or something about something rather than, than exposing it, all right? But it doesn't mean you don't see it, all right? And so, you know, you know that you're loving people that have these flaws and imperfections, you know? And so this superabundant love, you know, this this ever-increasing love in us is, is what, what keeps us on track, all right? Just, you know, it's just to kind of give you that. All right, so uh, just keep moving right along here. Right, so... Uh, I remember, oh yeah, I, I remember when, when I was uh, back and forth to Ukraine, I still am quite a bit, uh, you know, and at some point I was telling the people there that I loved Ukraine and I love the U Ukrainian people, they said, ah, there's a lot you don't know. They assumed that it was based on lack of knowledge, right? And they began to pour out to me all the stories about all the difficult things that were happening in their country. I said, I know all that. I, in fact, I told them some stories that I knew. They were surprised that I knew them. And I said, do you think we don't have corruption in our country? I said, uh, no. I says, I, I know all that, and I love your country. And I remember uh, when one of the pastors visited, he says, you know, your pastor really love Ukraine. He says, sometimes we think he loves Ukraine even more than we do. He's like inspiration, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that meant a lot to me that, that they understood that I really did love uh, them and their country and that I demonstrated that over the course of my, my life toward them. All right, so uh, I'm not going to read the whole scripture, but I would encourage you to go read Second Peter 1, uh, verses 3 through 11. But uh, but it, it describes this person who is pursuing the Lord uh, by adding to their faith virtue, the virtue of knowledge, the knowledge, temperance, temperance, patience. You know, it gives this whole thing. And it, it just says this in verse 8. For if these qualities are yours in ever incre and ever increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All right. So I want you to understand that this ever increasing thing, that, the, that, you're, that you're, you don't get a supply and just try to live off it. Okay. It's to be ever increasing. Okay. Colossians 3, 12 through 14. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness is the character, okay, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another, forgiving each other, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. So this ever-increasing love and how important it is. See that you be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God and Christ has forgiven you in Ephesians 4.32. All right, so that you may approve things that are excellent. All right, so what are the things that we approve? What are the things that we, in this knowledgeable love, uh, are able to say that's something that God approves of. That's something that, that God, uh, you know, gives favor to, all right? That, uh, you know, love covers sin, but but uh, it recognizes the sin and then covers it. it it's it, There's a scripture over in uh, Proverbs 19:11 it says this, a man's discretion or person's discretion uh, makes them slow to anger. And it is his glory to overlook a transgression. You see it and you look past it. All right. That's what we're talking about here. And over in James 1, 19 through 20, it says that we should be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Because why? Because our wrath, you know, when we get angry instead of, instead of, you know, letting this ever increasing love be what compels us, when anger is what starts to compel us and the things that we're saying and doing, uh, scripture warns us that anger of man does not uh, achieve uh, the righteousness of God. All right. So we're to be filled with the fruit that comes uh, through Jesus Christ, which is the fruit of righteousness, all right? And what it is, is this is all to the praise and glory of God. So Philippians 1.11, again, having been filled with the fruit of righteousness, which comes through Jesus Christ to the glory of God. Just want to point out one thing. Filled means stuffed. Stuff coming out the seams, you know, that's just, you are stuffed with this righteousness. In other words, it's not like a seasoning. Okay, this is, this, you're stuffed with this. God desires to fill you. All right, with the fruit of righteousness, those things we described before, the, the compassion, the kindness, the humility, the gentleness, the patience, those sorts of things. God wants to stuff you full of those things so that when you're crushed, so that when you're poked, what comes out are those things. All right, to his glory. All right, and the source of them is Jesus. It's not you. You're not going to work these up in your own strength. All right, so, uh, you know, it, it means to be made replete or stuffed full. All right, and the fruit comes through Jesus Christ. I want to make sure that we all get that. Not by our strength or goodness, and it is by the work and presence of the Holy Spirit in us. Those are the fruits of the Spirit uh, that, that are this, this, this fruit of righteousness, okay? It describes Jesus, and it's the character that God wants to work in us. And so it's the product of Christ who is uh, in our lives and who has given us an example to follow, all right? And so, uh, to the glory and praise of God, remember that the things, okay, that are good and acceptable to God are the things that, that we're wanting to put forward for, that people would glorify Him in the day of visitation, it says, all right? And just to understand that you can be what God wants you to be. Why? Okay? Because of Him, all right? And with that, I'm going to say God bless you. We'll see you next time on the 10-minute video summary.